Sometimes you can watch WWE TV after being on social media and think you've lost your mind, or at least I do every now and then. Because let's take this week's episode of SmackDown on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram or whatever. Initially, we were told it was going to be the OC versus the New Day. And before that, it was rumoured that it was going to be Drew McIntyre Elias taking on the New Day, but that was switched. We were also going to get Dolph Ziggler versus Finn Balor and a King's Court segment with Jerry the King Lawler featuring the one, the only, the legend Trish Stratus. Now we've watched it, we know there was one final change because we got Kofi Kingston versus AJ Styles instead and Elias didn't even turn up. Who knows where he is? I guess he was just backstage going do 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 and playing his guitar. And there was probably more changes that we aren't aware of because as first broken by Ryan Satin of the Pro Wrestling Sheet, Vince McMahon arrived at the SmackDown Arena on Tuesday afternoon. He looked at the script and he went, nope. I think we should rewrite all of it. All words to that effect, my point is, you haven't lost your mind, you're not crazy, you're perfectly normal, it's just they'd announced a bunch of stuff and then realized they shouldn't have announced a bunch of stuff, but they went on and changed it anyway. This was also the case last week when it came to SmackDown 2, so you're right, Vince McMahon continues to rewrite SmackDown on the day of the show. Why? Here's why. If we go back to basics, it's mostly because when Vince McMahon lays his eyes on this piece of paper, because apparently we're back in 1975, he probably gets it on his computer or digital device. Anyway, he looks at it and goes, nah, this isn't what we're going to do. And that doesn't make any sense, because most people say that the script for SmackDown gets written on a Thursday, or at least that's when it starts, so what the hell happens over the weekend? And yeah, maybe there's some kind of fallout from Raw which sends brains a thinking, but I don't see how that can be real because Drew McIntyre appeared on both Raw and SmackDown this week. And on Raw, he was just involved in a show closing brawl. And then on SmackDown, he was having a match with Kevin Owens. At no point did any storylines or narratives interlink. Look at this. There is more to this now, however, because it is the second week in a row Vince McMahon has decided to do this. And if we do jump in our DeLorean and go back seven days, do you know what most people thought about that episode of SmackDown? They thought it was good. And do you know what most people thought about this week's episode of SmackDown? They thought it was good. I mean, a week ago, we had all that stuff with Dolph Ziggler and HBK and Bray Wyatt were great. And we ended with Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns, the cool baby faces standing tall. It was just a very easy and a very nice watchable show. And I'm certainly not saying that this kind of erratic booking is going to help long term. However, right now, Vinnie Mac is two for two. And that's a 100% record. Given that there will be plenty of fans that have no idea what's happening behind the scenes. And all they're getting, like I say, is a decent television program there's every chance he keeps on doing it because why the hell not we may talk about it but like mary boxhead there's a box down there who just watches wwe because she enjoys it doesn't go on wrestling news sites she has no idea what happens a few hours before any show goes live however that doesn't negate one serious issue the misuse or the forgetting of talent for example there was no mandy rose and sonya deville versus the iconics match on this week's SmackDown, despite seven days ago being told by Mandy Rose that they would get a tag team title shot on this episode, and if they did win on the episode after that, they would get a tag team title shot. Sorry, it just hurts my brain when I think about what she said and I happen to fall down. But they weren't there, they were gone, and Buddy Murphy, he doesn't exist anymore, even though like back in the day he was all like, oh Shane McMahon, I'm with you, I'm gonna be standing up to you. And where was Shelton Benjamin? Where's Shelton Benjamin in his whole after being asked a question. Like I say, they've been forgotten about because there is too much stress of the big man coming in saying, we've got to change everything. And the little people, no disrespect to them, but the people that aren't main eventers are always going to find themselves thrown by the wayside. I mean, there probably was concepts for all of those people when all of a sudden you have to rethink about Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre and The New Day and Kofi Kingston and AJ Styles and Gallows and Anderson and Kevin Owens and everybody else. Of course you're going to run out of time. In short then, I guess we can only say that Vince is in full on panic mode and is searching for the answer sooner rather than later. And I don't know when WWE gets the ratings for Raw. I mean, for us, they basically break a few hours before SmackDown begins, but maybe there's every chance that comes in. He looks at it and goes, well, everything we tried last night didn't work. We have to try someone different. Because if you didn't see the Raw ratings this week, they just weren't very good. I mean, they weren't as good as last week's, but they're never going to be because that was the Raw reunion but it was also lower than the weeks 
that preceded that. That is not what WWE wanted. The problem there is that you're going after something that doesn't exist. There is no way, no company, no form of entertainment, no sport that can put on such a good show one time that all of a sudden its entire viewership comes back. It ain't happening. The long game is keeping this bar of quality so high that word of mouth starts to spread and you reinvigorate the fans trust in the WWE product to the point they go, well, I can watch Raw and I can watch SmackDown because now I have the evidence that more than likely it'll be good, whereas six months ago or a year ago or however long it takes, the percentages said it would probably suck balls. That is simple entertainment maths. When you sit down with that remote in hand and you decide what to do with your free time, you will pick something that you know delivers. That's why a lot of people do watch sport. If you're really into sport and you can get something out of a boring nil-nil football game, you still watch it because you think, I enjoy the fundamentals, I just enjoy the atmosphere, I enjoy the crowd. It's also a little bit strange that our CEO would choose to do this when he has examples of how bad it can go. I mean, WCW used to rewrite parts of Nitro when Nitro was on the air, and we all know what happened to WCW, and TNA suffered the same fate because they were doing it too. And now look at TNA. TNA is dead. Impact has been born out of the ashes. And you could say that Impact is a better show than total non-stop action ever was. And that's controversial. And that could spark arguments. But they pretty much have a good show every week. And I don't want WWE to become New Japan or vice versa. I enjoy the fact that they're separate entities. But you could do a lot worse than look at what Gado does and just borrow his approach a little bit. I mean, it's not even his approach. It's just old school wrestling mentality. Pick some wrestlers, give them a story, and figure out where they're gonna be or where the story is gonna end four to five months down the line, and then choose your direction of travel. You can't do that if you're just booking everything on the fly. Because how can you? You're booking everything on the fly. You have to come up with a good idea, even though there's all these other stresses affecting you. It becomes get it done by hook or by crook. And that applies even to a YouTube video. If I've got some time for a YouTube video and I can come up with some funny skits, great. But sometimes a new story breaks and it's go, go, go. And you may look back on that video and go, well, it was cool because it was a reactionary video and we had something to talk about. But maybe with a little bit more time, it would have been more creative. It's just how the human brain operates. Clearly, Mr. McMahon doesn't agree and he is desperate to come up with something new on a Tuesday before SmackDown because deep down he is just desperate to get back to those glory days. And I can get that, I understand. And again, it is working to this point. For example, who the hell tried to kill Roman Reigns? I love a good mystery. I love a good who done it. Straight away, I'll tune in next week just to get a little tidbit of some information. But it would have been so much better if that had been planned for a while and hadn't just been come up on a whim when somebody probably said, well, how do we end SmackDown this week? We should end it with a big twist, with a big like, oh my gosh. And someone went, well, we could try and kill Roman Reigns. The light bulbs went off. It would probably just be Samoa Joe when all was said and done, and that is fine, I'm cool with it. It is something that Samoa Joe would have done. But imagine if we had gone the other way. Let's say we decided that Adam Cole was ready to come up from NXT and he was going to be the guy that tried to murder Roman Reigns' ass. All of a sudden, you have an awesome heel on your hands. The people that know him from NXT are going to think it's really, really cool. And if you don't know him, you know that he's a big deal because, again, he's in the main event scene and he's trying to kill the biggest dog in the yard. The big dog! That works! Or at least it's much better than hot shotting everything. And hot shotting can work, but not if you do it all the time. I know the ratios are against me at the moment, but I believe if we do keep doing this, SmackDown will plummet into the floor. We'll keep an eye on it as we always do. And look, prove me wrong. I love that. I still get a good entertainment show. And that's all I want. Maybe Vince McMahon will go three for three. And maybe we'll get to December 2019. And he will have gone like, what, 16 for 16 or something like that. Also, just on a slight tangent, I don't think if Fox executives found out about them, of course, SmackDown is going to Fox in October. I think, you know, they'd probably be like, what are you doing? I do not care about this television show. Why aren't you giving it? more time you seem to be rushing. And then Fox will get mad, and then WWE will get mad, then they'll fall out, then WWE will have Fox, and it'll all be doom and gloom. Now don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about all of this. Do you even care when SmackDown is written, when you actually think about it? Like, share, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE, and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon from What Culture, and I just want to reiterate that I think WWE TV is good right now. Sure, that's not showing in the ratings, but it's been a multitude of good shows that have made sense, that have been consistent, and that I've enjoyed. And I get it, but it's true. And there's nothing wrong with being positive, and there's nothing wrong with being happy, 
there's nothing wrong with saying that was good, I will come on here and say that it's good. Love you all, and I'll see you soon. Why?